Minnesota Score Radio, your happy New Year's ticket. Pop the corks, watch the confetti come down, <laughs> the ball drop, all that good stuff. Uh, wow. Happy New Year to everybody. 2011 on its way. Hard to believe. Tis here. It, it couldn't be any worse for your Minnesota Vikings than 2010 was. This was a, uh, well, it's one of those years. You know, I, I think they, they they just as soon see it in the rearview mirror right now. And, and the big question, how many of these guys are going to be back next year? I mean, this is this could be a whole different deal when we walk in here in September next year. A lot of questions swirling around the Vikings. Uh, maybe our next guest can help us shed some light on the future in 2011, which, oh, by the way, is the last year they have to play at the Metrodome. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy 1-1-11. Right? Correct. Wow, all ones. All ones. It's not bad. Yeah. Unlike uh, when we went from 1999 to 2000, they, they thought the world was coming to an end. The, the clocks were going to stop. Cars weren't going to run. Engines weren't going to start. Remember when we went through that? I do remember. I spent it in El Paso. The Gophers were in the Sun Bowl, and I thought that was a sign that the world was going to end, that they actually made a bowl game. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're on the record as saying they'll never go to the Rose Bowl. I said in my lifetime, and still ticking. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, they're, you're right. The Gophers aren't going to a Rose Bowl anytime soon. The Vikings aren't going to the Super Bowl anytime soon. But they are going to have a new face next year. I mean, this it, it's going to be a different club. Do you see let, – let's get right to the Joe Webb question. Do you see him as a viable NFL backup quarterback? I'm going to take you one greater than that. I see him as the future quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. Really? He won his first start as a rookie. What do you like about him on the field? And I'll name you another Hall of Fame player in this organization who was a rookie who won his first NFL start. You ever heard of some guy named Fran Targenton? That's the, that's the rumor. They beat the Chicago Bears, who were coached by the great George Hallis. And that Philadelphia Eagle team is the second highest scoring team in the NFL. A lot of people already had him in the Super Bowl. They got the great Michael Vick reformed and everything from the murders of the dogs and, and the time in prison. And now he's reformed and he's a great player. But the, the Vikings made him look awfully average. And uh, the star of that game was Joe Webb. Well, and I think it's key that on Sunday we're going to see Joe Webb start again. I, I know there was some sentiment that this is it for Brett Favre. It would be nice to see him go out with one more game. But but the NFL is a business. And, and as good as Joe Webb was on Tuesday night, and he was brilliant, I still need to see more. And one more start in a situation where you're going to face a Lions team that really wants to win. They want to get out of last place. It's another thing that you can use to evaluate Joe Webb. So I'm glad he's starting. Joe Webb has something you can't teach. He's got a heart, and you can see that the way he plays, the way he prepares. And if you've been around athletes as long as I have, you, you understand that. His test was Tuesday, and he passed it big time. He made some, uh, some big time plays with his feet, with his mind, and with his arm. And if you can do those things, you can play and start in the National Football League. What is different about Joe Webb? Compare Joe Webb and Tavares Jackson. Because Tavares Jackson had three, four years of being able to indoctrinate himself to the Brad Childress system. And it I, I know he did not get to play much, obviously, since Brett Favre came on board. But I just did not see the kind of progress out of him that I had hoped to see when he stepped in a couple of weeks ago and then ended up getting turf toe and has been unable to play. You know, to Tavares' credit, uh, he's not Brett Favre, and I mean that in a, in a positive way and not in a negative way in any way. But remember this, Tavares did lead this team at least a part of the year to, to Brad Childress' first division championship. They lost a playoff game, ironically, to the same Eagle football team with a different quarterback at that time, Donovan McNabb. And uh, he took an Arizona team to, to task. He threw four touchdown passes against some quarterback named Kurt Warner. I, I was at the game. Tavares did. So Tavares has had some good moments as a Viking quarterback, but I think, unfortunately for him, People have expected him to continue to be somebody who he has not proven he can be. He's not Michael Vick. He's not Steve Young. 
he he's Tavares Jackson, and I think well, he's not even Joe Webb right now. Yeah, but unfortunately for for Tavares, I just think that uh, Tavares just hasn't been able to deal with the position he's been in and the failure that he's perceived to have had. And unfortunately, if you can't deal with the ups and downs in the NFL, you're not around very long. Well, to me, the, the irony is, and maybe the biggest knock I have on T-Jack, because I still think we don't really know what we have in Tavares, good or bad, is durability. I mean, ironically, Brett Favre's 297-game consecutive start streak ends on that Monday in the neutral site game at Ford Field against the Giants. So, so Tavares gets the golden chance to start, and his consecutive game starting streak ended at 1. And, and durability is what it's all about in sports. It, it's lining up and being there every week. And so far, Joe Webb is at least showing that uh, he's got durability through two games. What's so, what did Chuck Farmer used to say? What, what, you can't make the club in the tub. There you go. That's the truth. And unfortunately, he, he also took out some famous running back named Adrian Peterson with that knee, right? <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I, I wish Tavares the best. I just don't see him uh, being here. Next year, I, I really don't. I, I don't think the Vikings are going to stay in that direction. I think they learned enough last week that uh, Joe Webb has the potential to be their quarterback. They're going to bring in also a veteran to compete with him for that job. I think that's the way you go about it. Uh, they're not going to be a championship caliber team next year anyway. Let's be realistic about it. They've got 20 free agents on that team. They're not going to be able to sign the ha half of them. But I think they'll put a team on the field that will be representative of, of Minnesota, though. All right. Uh, the next question, and this, is, of course, is the other big question that looms. Will Leslie Frazier be the head coach here next year? I think Tuesday we learn who the future quarterback is going to be, Joe Webb. Potentially, and I think we found out that uh, Leslie Frazier is going to get that job. I don't think there's any way that uh, you can fairly evaluate Leslie Frazier in a negative way in view of what he's had to deal with. With the collapsing of a dome in preparation for a, a game that was supposed to be played at home, and then to have to take your team on the road and play a good New York Giants team in Detroit, uh, after, I mean, there's just too much stuff up in the air. And I mean, look at what happened in Philadelphia. I mean, to, to go there, I, I mean, this, uh, imagine that. I mean, you're preparing to try to get a job and you've got to deal with potentially the worst possible scenarios of any interim coach in the history of the National Football League. Not to mention, you got a quarterback, a Hall of Fame guy named Brett Favre, who pops up and can play after being said he's out. I mean, it's it's amazing, but he, he stuck by the guns. He made what he believes were the right decisions. I think he's shown that he can make good, solid decisions, and I think he can be a good, solid head coach in the NFL. I say Leslie Frazier is the Viking coach in 2011. There you have it from uh, the great Larry Fitzgerald here on Minnesota Score Radio, your purple ticket. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. I expect objectivity out of you, even though there, oh boy. there may be a little bit of bias here. <laughs> Is the NFC West, top to bottom, the worst division in the history of the National Football League? Because you have Seattle and St. Louis in, in a winner-take-all game Sunday night, the flex game on NBC. If, if the Seahawks win, they're in at 7-9. and nine. And if the Rams win, they're in at 8-8. Eight and eight. I'll take an 8-8. Eight and eight. You know what? There's there have been other 8-8 eight eight teams that have Here made the go. playoffs. Here we go. I know where, I know where you're going with I this mean, one. There have been, go ahead, guys. Say I mean, Come you on, guys say, get do, it over do, with. You do. One of them was from Cleveland. <laughs> Thank you. You know, <laughs> get it over Brian with. Sight. I, I, I'll never forget. I think they beat the Raiders that year. Uh, or did the Raiders beat them? I forget. I, but well, it, I don't know if that was Red Right 88. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, they won a, a tough. Uh, Why do you have to do this to me? Every AFC time. Central or whatever it was they call it then. And that team had <laughs> Pittsburgh and <laughs> Cincinnati. And, you know, I mean, that was a tough division. But uh, I just think we just, it's just one of those years. You had the, how many new coaches? I mean, second-year coach for uh, Mike Singletary, second year taking over at San Francisco, quarterback issues. First and uh, a half. Arizona, I mean, quarterback issues. Now. Seattle, uh, new head coach. Uh, the guy ran away from USC. I forget his name. Uh, and then Pete Carroll, of course. 
And then, you know, the last and least, the Rams, one game they won last year, they got the top pick and, and he starts. So it was just one of those years where, you know, where the, where the moon didn't rise in the, in the <laughs> NFC West. But I'm hoping that the, that the Rams, a good football team, that is not as good as, say, some of the other teams in the NFC or AFC will qualify for the playoffs and save the NFL the embarrassment of having a 7-9 and nine team like Seattle qualify as a division winner, playing a team coming in there with a winning record that would be the heavy favorite. And you know this. You've seen a few games at Quest Field, so have I. If the Seahawks win... And they'll go in as a 7-9 and nine team, and everybody will be they'll dogging get them. Game. They'll get a home game. That's my point. That's not an easy place to win. It's a long trip. They could steal one. Sure they could. I mean, any given Sunday. Or Tuesday, as we learn. And <laughs> hey, you know what? The Vikings have never won the Super Bowl, but they won a game on a Tuesday in the NFL. Only two teams in the history of the league could say that. <laughs> Boy, I, you know what? I'm glad you are. You are Mr. Silver Lining. <laughs> well, on this season, which has been as bizarre a year as, I mean, I don't know if it compares with Pecos River, the year the Vikings decided on that trip, or the Herschel Walker <laughs> deal. But, I mean, there have been some bizarre years in Viking history. But this year takes the cake, particularly the way it finished, I mean, with the collapse of the dome, and then playing at TCF Stadium in a snowstorm, but yet having the next week's game postponed because of a snowstorm. <laughs> and the snowstorm that was here was far greater and worse than the one in, now, in Philadelphia because right. I had to travel two and a half hours to get there. I mean, you did too. It was just a night you'll never forget. I agree. And the University of Minnesota benefited, no doubt about that. Uh, the Vikings didn't because they just didn't play particularly well that night. Brett got hurt. And uh, the, re the rest is history. The Bears won the division. And uh, don't count the Bears out, guys. I think they're a team that might get oh, to another Super Bowl. Here we it's go. amazing. They're, they're going to have a one or a two seed. I think Lovey Smith is off the hot seat, folks. Yeah, I, I think that's a <laughs> Larry, happy new year. Happy new year, guys. It's always a pleasure. Best of luck to you. And uh, We'll see you at Target Center. That's right. That's why some guy named Chris, uh, what's his name? Chris. He, he dates the Kardashian, Humphreys. Chris Humphreys, that's right. He's got Reggie Bush's old girlfriend. Can't wait to see his publicist. You know, he wants to let everybody know who he's dating. By the way, she's got 5.4 million followers on Twitter. That's a couple more than you. Who is Chris um, Humphreys dating? Kim Kardashian. You're kidding. Keeping up with the Kardashians. You know, the stepfather is Bruce Jenner, former decathlete. I know you don't watch it. He's had a face but, job. But, yeah, I can tell. But, uh, and, but and Lamar can, Odom is married to Chloe. That shot put. <laughs> <laughs> Lamar Odom of the Lakers is married to Khloe Kardashian. And I'm wondering if that's why Phil Jackson sat him down the other night. Well, who's, who's Hank Baskett's girlfriend? He's another one of those reality show guys, isn't he? Yeah. His wife, Hank. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> On that note. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to come back. One more segment to go. Minnesota Score Radio, your Kardashian ticket.